We are back. Now we are moving on to chapter number five of uh, mechanics, which is all about resolving forces. Now, the first thing we should check out is what is resolving forces. So quick, quick little definition here. Resolving a force is when we break down a force into two smaller forces and we call them components, right? Now these components are usually uh, vertical, i.e. in the y direction or horizontal in the x direction. Okay, so what we're going to do is take like a force which is maybe pointing, so it's like sloping that way. And what we're going to do is turn it into uh, like an upwards force and a sideways force instead. Um, and then once we've found out what these components are in the x and y direction, we can express these forces uh, in vector form. So vector form in i and j form, right? Where i represents the x direction, that's a unit vector in the x direction, and j is the unit vector in the y direction. So let's check out how we do this. Now, we've got this force here, right? And it's acting, uh, if you think about a compass, it's acting like in the north, so northeast direction. Um, so what does that mean? Well, if it's acting in the north and east direction, then it means, well, it's like a bit north and a bit east. So that's kind of the way I would think about it. So we can say that this force of 10 newtons can be expressed as a little bit north i.e. a little bit upwards, as the blue arrow is showing you there, and a little bit to the right, which is the yellow arrow there. And so what I'd like us to, to note as well is that even if we took the blue arrow and popped it on this side, can you see that's going to be like exactly the same? Um, and so what we've created here is called a vector triangle, okay, where the yellow vector and the blue vector together give you uh, the black one over there. All right, so now let's check out how we can resolve these or turn this 10 newtons into the two smaller forces, the yellow one and the blue one. So here it is. I'm just gonna pop those back on here. So there and there. Now, what we should do is create a little right angle triangle. So look, I'm going to use this red dotted line down here to create me a nice triangle. There it is. And so what we've got is that, that, and that. We've got this as 10 newtons. This here is 30 degrees. Right angle in here. And we are looking for this down the bottom, right? A little bit of simple trig. Soccer toa is, you know, what you would have learned. You've got your opposite over here. You've got your hypotenuse over here. Whoop and you've got your adjacent down here. So you can see that we're going to need to use uh, the cosine over here. So we can say cos 30 is equal to the adjacent over your hypotenuse, which is 10. And so to find out what x is, i.e. Uh, the component in the x direction, I'm gonna put that as 10 cos 30. And there we go. So now on the yellow arrow, what I'm saying is it's moving, well, 10 cos 30 uh, to the right, if we're talking about compasses, obviously. But what we're saying is this force is acting 10 cos 30 newtons to the right. And now the reason that I've drawn this in here, I've just drawn you a nice X and Y axis, is because what we can see is that's pointing towards the positive X direction. And so what we should always do is give a sign. And because it's going to the positive x direction, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it as a positive sign, okay? Um, so that's that over there. I'm going to take this. Let's pop that over there. Boom. And then we're going to say that that was 10 cos 30 newtons. And that's obviously positive, pointing off that way there. And now we need to work out this blue um, side over here, right? Now the blue one, remember, as we said last time, we could have shifted the blue arrow and popped it over here. So what you should be able to see is that's just the opposite of the triangle that we've already drawn. So let me pop it back over here. And we can actually use this same triangle now. So let's just rub this out. And I'm gonna put the opposite back on this one. And now we'll call this Y. So I wanna calculate this now. How am I gonna do it? I've got opposite, I've got hypotenuse, I need to use sine. So I'll have sine of 30 this time is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And so y will be equal to 10 sine 30. And so again, if we were referring back to compasses and that kind of thing, what it's telling us is this 
here, the 10 newtons moving off in that direction, it's worth like 10 sine 30 in the north direction. But because we're talking about forces here, what we're saying is this 10 newton force is acting as 10 sine 30 upwards or in the positive y direction. So let me fill that in on this arrow here, 10 sine 30 newtons. And there we go. So blue arrow onto our diagram here as well. You can see that's going in the positive y direction. So the sign would just be positive. So let's pop that down here as well, 10 sine 30 newtons. There we go. And so remember, I said what we're going to do is turn this into I and J form now, where I was the unit vector in the X direction and J was the unit vector in the Y direction. So to turn this into I and J form, what we're going to do now is the I direction member, the X direction. So we're going to say this is 10 cos 30 lots of I plus and then the J direction, that's 10 sine 30, lots of J. Okay, so you can punch that into the calculator, turn those into some decimals if you want to, um, etc. And that will be that. That's in I and J form over there. Now, what I'd like to point out just now is actually a little shortcut to this, okay? And it's going to be really, really useful um, for, for, you know, when you're doing mechanics, right, in general. Because all of these topics to come are going to involve resolving forces. And if you've got to draw triangles every time, it's going to be quite tedious to keep doing that. So now watch this, okay? What I want to show you is if we've got this 10 Newton force over here and we want to find out how much is acting in the positive X direction down here, see the yellow arrow, what we need to do is bring that 10 Newtons through an angle of 30 degrees, okay? So I'm gonna say that again, this needs to come through an angle of 30 degrees. Now, when we go through an angle, all you gotta remember is this. Think about this, the O in there represents cos, okay? So all we do is we do 10 and then cos whatever angle it is, okay? And you can see down here to get the yellow one, it was 10 cos 30. And now going the other way, if we wanted to find what was happening in the y direction, then look, we're going that way, which is kind of like away from the 30. So I'm just gonna put away over there. Now, when you're going away from the 30, it's sine, okay? So all you've got to do is, I'm gonna put sine as a little note next to that one there. Um, so that would just be 10 and then sine your angle, okay? Now. Make a note of that because what I'm going to do is we're going to have a look at another example where we can use that same technique. And it's obviously going to get you there so much quicker than drawing out some triangles. So let's look at this example now. Now, what can you see? Well, we need to flip this blue arrow. Hang on one second. Let's flip this. Boom. There it is. Okay. Now you can see, imagine if we're on a compass again, we're moving off in like the northwesterly direction, that one over there. So what we can do this time is break it into how much like upwards and how much left this time. Okay, so drag our two forces here. Here's the blue arrow, here's the yellow arrow. So like that, okay, so that's what we're gonna do. So here it is. Let's just quickly flip this again. Blue arrow upwards, yellow arrow, there we go. And remember, if we wanted to take the blue arrow and create a triangle of uh, forces there, we could do that as well. What we're showing there is the yellow one and the blue one together make the black one over there, okay? So let's just move that blue one back to where it's supposed to be. So from there, let's drag it back, back, okay. Now, for this one, I will create the triangle. So let's do that, bam, 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 there, boom. So there's our right angle triangle. We'll make a clean drawing of it just over here. We've got this, and we've got 55 degrees this time, and this is seven newtons as our hypotenuse. Now, for the yellow um, force there, which is going to yellow component, which is, uh, acting in the negative x direction this time. I'm just gonna put an x on here, x on here, boom. And so to calculate that, uh, what have we got? Well, we've got the hypotenuse, so HYP, and we've got our adjacent. So again, we're gonna use cosine. So we can say cos 55, bam, bam, is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so like that. So we'll have seven cos 55 is going to equal x. There it is. So what we're saying is this force is acting as seven cos 55 newtons in 
the x direction. Now what you'll see is from here, if I drag my yellow force onto um, you know, our coordinate axes, it's acting in the negative x direction because you know the numbers there are negative, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is pop a sign on there. We're gonna put a negative sign. So what I'm gonna say is, it's acting minus seven cos 55 newtons. There we go. And then let's go with the blue force now. So the blue one there, blue component, which is the vertical component. I'm gonna put a letter Y on my triangle to work that one out. Remember, it's exactly equivalent. Um, this blue over here to moving it over there, right? They're the same thing. So we are going to be using the opposite and the hypotenuse again, opposite hypotenuse, sine. So we need the sine ratio there. So sine 55 is equal to the opposite y over the hypotenuse 7. So we'll have 7 sine 55 this time is equal to y. So if I pop that onto here, that's 7 sine 55 newtons or we could even put it on here, seven sine 55, like that. And so that's telling me that we're going like seven sine 55 newtons upwards, okay? So if we pop that onto our diagram here, so on our axes, flip that upwards, pop it over there. What we're saying is we are going seven sine 55 upwards there. So that's our Y component. And now if we turn this into I and J form, now remember I's is the X direction. And because we're going in the negative X, what we've got to do is put minus seven cos 55, lots of I, but then we're still going in the positive Y. So plus seven sine 55 J's. And that's how we leave it over there in um, I and J vector form. Now that trick again, Let's have a look at using that, right? So we get the highlighter. Now, if we wanted to find the X component down here, what we've got to do is take this seven Newtons through, there we go, through uh, 55 degrees. And remember what I said, because that through has got an O in it, it's just cos. So all we needed to do was just seven cos and then your angle, 55, which is exactly what we had. And then you can do the same going the other way. So with this one, we're going away from the 55 degrees. So away. And when we go away, it means sine. So all we do is seven and then just go sine 55. Done, simple, okay? And that's literally taking seconds, all right? So hopefully you understand that. Okay, brilliant. Now with this one, you can see this force of eight Newtons is already acting vertically, right? There's nothing acting in the horizontal direction. Now, as I said, you can see that there is this eight Newton force acting in the vertical Y direction. And there isn't really anything acting in the horizontal direction, but we can confirm that by using what I told you about last time. Now we know that the angle in here is 90 degrees, right? And so if we wanted to find out whether there is some sort of horizontal component, then what we've got to do is take this to the yellow uh, force over there. And to do that, we are going through an angle of 90. And remember through means cos. So what we would need to do is eight cos and 90. Cos 90 is zero, which then confirms that we are just doing eight lots of zero, which is zero. And that tells us that there is definitely no horizontal component. Now you may say, oh, but wait, what about in the positive x direction? I've only drawn a negative x arrow. Well, we can do the same thing on this side. You can see that we need to take it through another 90 degrees on this side. So also zero, right? So no point. So then if I pop these arrows on here, one going upwards and one going to the left over there. The way I'm gonna leave this is because it's just going eight Newtons in the positive um, y direction there, I can leave this as zero i because there is no horizontal uh, component there. And then eight j's, or you can just leave it as eight j. Okay, sweet. So here are some questions now for you to practice. Try using that little shortcut that I was using as well. Um, you'll find it works for, for every single question there. 
So have a quick go at these and I'll catch up with you in a couple of seconds to go over them. Okay, time to review now. So with this first one, um, what we should have done is split it into the positive y direction here and the positive x direction. Because again, if you're thinking about a compass and this is going in the northeasterly direction, it's kind of going a little bit north and a little bit east. So now I'm gonna use that little trick I showed you um, to help us work out the x component and the y component. Now the x component, what I'll need to do is drag that nine newtons through an angle of 50, right? So this is going through here. Remember the O stands for cos. And so what we're going to do is 9 cos and then 50. And that's going to tell us our x component. The y component, we're going to go away from the 50, right? So this is just going to be 9 sine 50. And so if you wanted to leave that in i and j form, we would leave that as 9 cos 50 lots of i plus 9 sine 50 lots of j. Now moving on to the next one, we'll need to change our arrows just a little bit um, because we're kind of going in that like northwesterly direction again. So you need to do a little bit north if you like and then a little bit to the west. So that way over there. And we'll use the same technique again. So that four newtons, this time I want to take it to the horizontal. So looking at the x direction, but you can see that this is in the negative x direction this time. So whenever you work out this, you're going to put a sign of minus on there. So let's just get uh, blue, here we go. So we're going through 30, so that's going to be four, and then ooh, cos, and then 30. Done, and then in the vertical direction, what are we doing? We're going away from the 30 degrees. So for that one there, we would do four sine 30. And so again, in I and J form, we would leave that as minus, pop a minus on there because it's going in the negative x direction so that's minus 4 cos 30 lots of i plus and then 4 sine 30 lots of j and that's that now the very last one there easiest one of them all obviously because it's already acting perfectly in the x direction and it's the positive x direction so its component is just six or six newtons if you like in the uh, positive x direction and to turn that into i and j form we would have just six i's no j's whatsoever so that's that over there okay so i hope you found this useful hope you know now how we can resolve some forces i'm going to do a couple more examples in another video um, so if you're not too sure go on to that one have a look at it there's a few more examples that i'll go through in there okay um, and so look forward to seeing you again soon keep practicing some maths